Just uh, do a little bit of that there. Whatever that happens to be. Let her rip, Tater Chip. And the home of the Welcome to episode 114 of the Hit the Deck podcast, where we talk deck hockey, street hockey, ball hockey, it's hockey in sneakers. And right off the bat, right here at the top of the show, in the most professional manner possible, I would like to jump straight away into our starting lineup. And why, you might ask? One, it's just the right thing to do. Two, I realized upon listening to last week's episode that... I never actually told you my name. I just introduced myself as the American Rhino and left it at that as if I'm some kind of like, you know, character or or, you know, some something or. uh, But you, dear listener, are worthy of knowing my name. And so it is with pride and with uh, great, great contrition that I present to you tonight's starting lineup and for tonight's starting lineup in goal as ever i am number 35 your american rhino gary mccomiskey and of course my professional (laughs) co-host oh thank you on defense number four i'm james sajazi yes sir how are you james i'm doing all right how about yourself sir you feeling all right Uh oh i am not feeling too bad myself Uh oh uh, you know, no, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I'm warm. It's apparently warm in my house, which, uh, you would think I would have noticed before, like 10 minutes before the podcast, but eh, it's such as, you know, say la vie, such is life. And I guess it's really, I mean, I hate just going on about the weather, which seems like something we've been doing a lot lately, but it's just so hard to predict what it's going to be like at this time of year. I mean, you know, Look, I'm glad it's not 90 degrees every day, and I'm glad it's not 20 degrees every day, but a little more consistency would be nice. You know, it, it, it's, it's great and all. I just, when it's 80 degrees one day and, you know, 60-something the next day, it's a little hard to figure out, you know, and plan for your environment, I guess. But I, I suppose I'm nitpicking and, and, you know, first world problems, as they say. No, you're you're not being unreasonable at all. I think Mother Nature is, quite frankly. And uh, to throw a bigger curveball to that is I hate when it's humid and chilly because then I don't know what to do because it's too (laughs) hot to wear a jacket and you're dying and then it's too cold to not wear a coat. So I don't know. Uh, I'm thoroughly confused even more than I usually am. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what, James? Here's a bit of banter for the top of the show. It's uh, once again, not hockey related, but... I think uh, given the, uh, let's call it the demographic of many of our listeners, I I think this may be worth talking about. As you saw, because I emailed you about it earlier today, they dropped a a brand new trailer for the Bumblebee movie. And uh, James, I imagine you will agree with me on this, but I say to you, dear listener, if you have not already seen the trailer and if you were a fan of the original Transformers cartoon, this is the movie that we should have gotten a decade ago. This is what it should have been instead of that Michael Bay trash that we actually got. Amen, brother. Amen. I mean, we we had hints. We had hints of it in the teaser trailer that dropped a few months ago. But in the full trailer, if you don't want to be spoiled on who is in this movie, then mm. I want you to uh, be advised that... We'll be spoiling it for, well, I don't know how long this conversation is going to last, but I'm going to say who who I saw in this trailer in uh, coming up here. So if you don't want to know or, or what have you, or you want to go watch it yourself, either pause it or forward it by a couple of minutes, I guess. But, uh, you know, spoilers for the trailer coming in three, two, one. 
obviously Bumblebee because he is the title character. And, and it, this is a prequel to those other Transformers movies. So this takes place in the 80s. We're talking Generation 1, you know, Volkswagen Beetle Bumblebee. That is what we've got. You got Starscream. <laughs> you got Shockwave. <laughs> you got Optimus Prime <laughs> looking like Optimus Prime is supposed to, like a CGI version of the cartoon Optimus Prime. Yes, yes, yes. And maybe the best part, you've got Soundwave yes! <laughs> and Ravage. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Looking... All of them looking exactly like they're supposed to. Amen, brother. I know James and I are a bunch of, uh, you know, old men who, who uh, in my day, the Transformers looked like this and we liked them. But like, yes, you know what? Call a spade a spade. Like 1980s, mid 80s Transformers, Generation 1. That's how they're supposed to look. And that's how they look in this movie. And I couldn't be happier about it. I mean, I hope I'd I add on to that, but I was smiling too hard. So I, sorry. I hope I am able to watch it. I mean, John Cena is in this movie, so there's a chance that I can't see it. <laughs> do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. I'm waving my hand in front of my face like that stupid. Anyway, um, <laughs> but yes, all kidding aside, I, I do fully intend. I, I have not been this excited for a Transformers movie since the first one. Well, I shouldn't say the first one, because I guess the first one was the, the 1980s uh, one where Optimus Prime dies, the cartoon. Mm -hmm. But but like the first Michael Bay movie, what, you know, in before I actually saw it, <laughs> I <laughs> this is like, oh, oh, I can't wait. Uh, you know what? Just give me all the nostalgia. I'm a sucker for it. Give me a Voltron movie. Give me a Thundercats movie. Oh, I want it all. Put it in my eyeballs. You probably... Not too far off, because if one's a hit, they'll all be a hit. And the whole reason why things keep coming back, like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, for example, mm -hmm. is that uh, when that generation becomes adults, you want to pass it on to the next generation, your kids, i.e., or nieces and nephews and what have you, or, uh, you know, and because we enjoy them so much and they were so much fun and great. And uh, then you have a whole other generation that can enjoy it. And and it's true because the Transformers were great. It was a lot of fun and things that were popular then because we're adults now, they should be popular again and, and done right. And this is, again, Gary, this is the Transformers movie, I think, that we've all fantasized about since we were little kids because the technology is there. The same thing with Spider-Man. And we'll get back to hockey in a minute, folks. But uh, <laughs> the, the, the special effects have finally gotten to a point where – I can't tell if they're special effects or not, and I'm no expert or anything like that. Just as an average fan, the technology is so fantastic, and the CGI looks so seamless as the Avengers, for example, too. You know, Spider-Man and the Hulk and, 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 and Iron Man, they look so realistic, and Transformers now, they look realistic. They can make these movies and pull no punches, and, and this is what we've always fantasized about. They, they don't just have to be cartoons. They could be what they are. And, and when this movie comes out, I hope it breaks all kinds of records because it, it just looks phenomenal. I got to say, uh, you mentioned animation. And there are a couple of things like from that era that have come back, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which you talked about. And Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles has kind of maintained a presence throughout. You know, every few years they seem to revive it in a new series. But... The most, I have to assume it's the most recent. The most recent series I saw, not that I saw an episode, but I saw just like snippets from, I don't know, man. The turtles look weird, like really weird. Like they're these, I, I was going to say super muscled, although the, the, the turtles in the 80s cartoon were, you know, they were pretty muscular. For, they weren't roid ragers you know, though. No, but these these guys look like like you just just that like these weird like super steroided up like crate I don't I don't know I can't even describe it the animation just looks really strange to me and uh, I mean I they've had they like I said they've had different turtle series in different styles and even the more cartoony ones still looked 
proportionally more or less like the turtles that we remember. These just look like actually do you remember the like uh I guess towards the end of the first run of the turtles toys where they came out with these like huge kind of monster looking teenage mutant ninja turtle variants? They look more like that than the actual turtles that we grew up with. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Weird. And I mentioned Thundercats. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of this, James, but they are actually rebooting the Thundercats series. I think it's Cartoon Network. I can't swear to it, but I think so. Are you familiar with the uh, cartoon Steven Universe? No, sir. Well, I don't watch it myself, but I have encountered people who do, and I am somewhat familiar with the animation style. It's like that. It, I mean, which you have no frame of reference if you don't know what I'm talking about. But for you, the listener, if you haven't heard about this, basically it's exactly that animation style. I almost want to say like, okay, I, I think I can describe this. You know how in Japanese anime, like Sailor Moon, uh, when the characters, or, or I guess like Pokemon or something, when the characters get really excited and their heads kind of get kind of rounded off and their mouths get big and their eyes become stars and, and it looks kind of really silly and, and, and for lack of a better word, cartoonish. The whole style is like that. Uh, okay. It's all very large round kind of rounded off figures that, and, and that are kind of squat and colorful. And I, I don't know. It's not for me personally. I mean, I know I'm not the demographic that they're targeting with this, but I'm just saying I don't like it so much. Fair enough. By cracky. Yeah, well, I think that's that's the point, too, which every generation has its own thing. Of course. And you want to, yeah, we're not supposed to like what's cool nowadays. And uh, that's been the case since at least the 50s, as far as I could tell, with pop culture and rock and roll and, uh, you know, uh, hot rods and stuff like that. And and rebelling against your parents. Not that I encourage that or that I ever did, but that's just kind of the nature of it. Like I was talking about how I don't like modern music nowadays and, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not going to trade the Beatles in for anything or Van Halen or, or any of the music I love and listen to. But uh, yeah, uh, again, the importance of passing on good things to the next generation is just for their benefit, but it's good to stand on your own two feet and have things that you'll love and and when this generation grows up, maybe pass along to the next generation after that, and we'll see. So one last thing, one last non-hockey, non-sequitur, but I think it's worth mentioning because, uh, you know, given the, the participants in this conversation. So, James, I know we had a little fun with Spider-Man on the podcast last week, or uh -huh. at least I did in the, like, the drop at the beginning. So... I don't know if you've heard anything about the Spider-Man video game that just came out for the PS4, but it is supposed to be amazing. Is it along the lines of how incredible that Star Trek game is that you showed me? No, it's not a VR game. It's just a like a, a straight up game. But I don't know if you were familiar with the Spider-Man 2 game that came out for like PlayStation 2 and I guess was it GameCube uh, or something? Maybe the original Xbox as well. I don't know. I think I played a computer version of it. Okay. And well, that, it was pretty uh, pretty amazing. Yeah, that game is kind of the gold standard for Spider-Man games. This game is apparently very much in that vein with Excellent. the freedom and exhilaration of being able to web swing through Manhattan and just kind of do these acrobatic stunts and, and just be Spider-Man. I've heard people play the game just like swing around the city sometimes for, you know, an hour at a time just because it's fun to swing around the city without actually doing anything. <laughs> That's awesome. He's apparent it's 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 not based on the Spider-Man from the MCU, which is Marvel Cinematic Universe, if you don't realize what I'm uh acronyming. That's not a word. But um so yeah, it, it's it's more based on the comics, uh, oh, from what I understand. So awesome. he's got all these different costumes that you can unlock. Oh, wow. um, it's not an origin story. It, it, he's already like eight years into being Spider-Man. So Oops. most, if not all of his villains are, are already established. And, and, you know, you don't have to watch Uncle Ben die. And, uh, you know, it's it's like, supposedly it's just a lot of fun excellent looking yeah. forward to it oh and the combat is uh it's basically arkham spider-man 
So, oh, really? Yeah. If, okay. if you, if you, James, or you, listener, enjoyed the combat in the Batman Arkham games, it's basically pretty much the same, except with Spider Man. That is high praise indeed. Yeah. So, uh, same kind of mechanics. Oh, and if this means anything to you, I don't know if it'll mean anything to you, James, but you, the listener, if this means anything to you, the game is made by Insomniac, which is the same company that makes the Ratchet and Clank games, which I love. So, that's something right there. That's a bit of a pedigree. But uh, I, I, I think it's fair to say we've, we've bantered on about not hockey for, for, you know, we've gotten our quota in for the beginning of the podcast. What say you, James? Yeah, uh, but it'll be worth it when we do get into the hockey stuff, which is coming right up. Mm -hmm. All right. So in that case, do you think, James, that we should just jump into the on deck for this podcast to, so as not to keep them waiting any longer? Yes, sir, coach. All right. Yeah. OK. All right. Well, in that case, then, uh, James, could you be so kind as to please tell us what is on deck for this podcast? Thank you, sir. Thank you. 2018-2019 NHL season. They're back on October 3rd and not a moment too soon. The American Rhino and I are ready. Are you? And this is a joke, right? The American Rhino and I had another topic all set for this edition of Hit the Deck. But when the Flyers debuted their new mascot, well, Gary and I just wouldn't be doing our jobs if we let that slide. And if that's what's on deck. Thank you, James. You are welcome, sir. All right. So to start off this very podcast, well, I mean, properly, we, we started it like 15 minutes ago. But to <laughs> yeah. start the hockey portion, the, the proper program of, for this evening, I would like to, uh, I don't know, I, I guess, I guess, uh, well, you know what? Why don't you? So let me let me just stop my thought there in mid thought. Uh, if you listen to the podcast last year, then you know that I don't actually, you know, do a lot of research <laughs> for for this. Uh, uh, not just for this podcast, which although definitely for the podcast, but also I don't do a lot of research when it comes to the upcoming NHL season. Like I'm not a whatever the short version of what I say every year, I'm not a big hockey fan. I'm a big Rangers fan. So, and even the Rangers, I haven't been very good with the last year, keeping up the, the, with the, uh, the changes in the team and how they're doing. But so like, I don't know what the big signings, the big free agent signings and trades were in the off season. I don't really know which teams are expected to do well and which aren't. I'm, I'm kind of a casual hockey fan. I'm a somewhat serious Ranger fan, but I'm a casual NHL fan. So like we're going to talk about the NHL and, and the upcoming season and how we think teams are going to do, but I'm going to be pulling it squarely out of my hockey pants. So <laughs> James, I am going to rely on you for most of the setup for this segment. <laughs> we're in a lot of trouble, but okay. Uh, but yeah, before we go into predictions and, and again, this is the third time we've done this on hit the deck as this will be the third time we've had the beginning of the NHL season to talk about on this wonderful podcast. We try and go a little bit differently by predicting the teams that will not make the playoffs because everybody else predicts the teams that will make the playoffs. And it's a little bit harder to say who won't make it because 16 teams do qualify while only 15 teams do not. So we'll get into that in a minute. And just to highlight some of the uh, key dates of the upcoming NHL season, again, October 3rd is when the season begins and the Edmonton Oilers and the New Jersey Devils will be over in Sweden and Germany. And on the third, the Oilers will host a uh, Germany team. I'm not going to try and pronounce that team's name. It has umlauts in it and everything. Then on the sixth, the Edmonton Oilers will face off against the Devils in Sweden. Then from November 1st through the 2nd, 2018, the Florida Panthers and Winnipeg Jets will play the Global Series in Finland. And on January 1st, 2019, the Bridgestone NHL Winter Classic will be in Notre Dame Stadium between the Boston Bruins and home team for that day, the Chicago Blackhawks. The NHL All-Star Game from January 25th through the 26th that weekend will be in San Jose. And finally, the Stadium Series will be February 23rd, 2019, between the Pittsburgh Penguins and Philadelphia Flyers. So from there, let's, uh, we're, and again, I didn't put too much thought into this this year either, because the last couple of years, I did a lot of research and listened to the NHL Network and 
on uh, the on the cable channel and on Sirius XM, which I do anyway. But really studied hard and, and tried to figure out how the teams would end up at the end of the season. And really, I couldn't have been more wrong if I just sat there and picked teams out of a hat. Be so, more uh, wrong, James. Yeah. So this year, uh, here's the thing. So yeah, we're, we're, Gary and I are going to go with the teams that won't make the playoffs this year. And it's really not based on much besides we're guessing. And that's the whole point is that you have the experts who live and breathe hockey and they really know what they're talking about. They're close with the teams. They're close with the players. As Gary said, they, they really studied the off season and, and free agent acquisitions and so on and so forth. But again, you got to play the games and there's injuries that come up. Then there's teams that come out of nowhere, Cinderella teams, the beauty of sports. And unfortunately there are teams that are picked that just don't do well for whatever reason. But all that being said, here we go in the metropolitan division, the four teams that I picked that will not make the playoffs this year. Fortunately, poor Carolina has been getting beaten up over the last week. Hopefully everybody's all right and recovering with the hurricane and so on and so forth. But uh, I don't think that the hurricanes themselves will make the playoffs this year. Again, they have a rookie manager and, and uh, excuse me, a rookie head coach and so on and so forth. But we'll see what happens with that. The Flyers, I'm picking not to make the playoffs because, again, I don't like the Flyers and I stick by that. The Canadians, I'm not a fan of them at all, but uh, I, I honestly think that they don't have enough to make the playoffs this year. And to prove I'm not a homer and to tick off my friends, <laughs> most of my friends anyway, I don't think that the Rangers are going to make the playoffs this year. Uh, again, rookie head coach. They do have uh, some good talent and, and watching the team last year, they've had uh, some decent lines and, and obviously Lundqvist is Lundqvist and the backup goalie I think is fantastic as well. But I don't think that they will have enough to make it to the postseason because the Metropolitan Division, that's where the Stanley Cup has lived for the last three years. And I don't know if it's going to leave there either, but I don't think it's coming to Broadway. All right. Well, that's that's a fair and even and, uh, you know, unbiased analysis. And I commend you for that. Thank you, sir. It was painful, but there it is. In contrast, I am very much a homer and uh, it's I think physically impossible for me to predict my team to, you know, not win the championship that year, let alone miss the playoffs. So I am going to pick the Rangers to make the playoffs. I have nothing to base that on except the fact that I, you know, I'm a Rangers fan and and so of course they're going to make the playoffs. Otherwise, I'm going to say uh, you know, I I think I think my picks are pretty close to yours. I'm going to say that the as you said Carolina Hurricanes are not going to make it because, you know, sorry, sorry Canes. Sorry Carolina Canes. And uh, actually, I think the Metropolitan is the easiest for me to predict because other than them, it's just going to be like division rivals that I'm going to pick are not going to make it because, you know, it's just I like doing that. The Islanders, the Devils and the Flyers are all going to not make it just because I don't like any of them particularly much. <laughs> so, you know, taste the golf course, boys. <laughs> that's that's really that's not even a good taunt. I'm sorry. I, I expect better of myself than that. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, enjoy your early summer vacation. You division. You know what? I, I'm not good at trash talk, so let's just move on. Well, yeah, we're a family podcast, so it's hard to uh, trash talk without using the potty language. So I commend you for that. I'm just, you know, I'm going to before we move on, I, I just I want to extend an apology a, a, a somewhat heartfelt apology to, you know, super fans, Sue and Anthony and, and, and Brad, of course, and, you know, any of our other friends and, and listeners who support the teams that I despise. So, you know, it's nothing personal to you. I hope you understand the nature of the rivalry and, and why I would make the decisions that I, I have. And you can take solace in the fact that I generally don't know what I'm talking about. So, you know, I'm sure my predictions will have zero bearing on the, the actual outcome of the season. Yeah, that's kind of the point of this, too. We're just coming up with stuff and see what happens, because uh, that's just the proof of you can predict and figure it out. But then why bother watching the games and watching the season? Because if you could predict it, it would be really boring. I mean, it would be great. Maybe you could win some money or whatever the case is. And if your favorite team wins the whole thing, then watch it unfold. But for the most part, 
sports are supposed to be natural and, and true live events and enjoy that while I can. But as Gary said, we invite Superfan Sue, if you'd like. Uh, please don't yell at your uh, device that you're listening to this podcast to. We'd love to hear your predictions. If you want to just shoot us up on Facebook or Twitter or whatever the case is, you don't have to do too much of an elaborate synopsis, but if you, we'd love, love to know, Superfan Sue, what you think the Devils will be like this year. I, I think that they'll capitalize on last year's good season and, and maybe even take a step forward. So we'd love to hear your opinion on that. Again, Superfan Anthony, as Gary said, and Brad, you guys, uh, we defer to you for the Islanders, and, and we know the nonsense that the offseason that the Islanders had with losing JT, but I think that they really did a good job with uh, Lou Lamarillo and uh, Trotz as their new head coach coming off the of Stanley Cup championship. And uh, they got some old faces back, which I think are great and will, will do well. They'll be playing half of the season back home in the old barn or the renovated barn in Nassau and in Brooklyn. So we'll see how that goes. And we'd love to hear your points of view on that. Lou, you're the Penguins fan that we defer to. So we'd love to hear what you think Pittsburgh's going to be like this year. I, I think that they're going to have another good year. And especially with the rival Capitals winning the Cup, uh, I think that's just going to light their flame a little bit hotter. And uh, Rob, you know, uh, if, if you can do the Rangers without going nuts or whatever the case is. And uh, Gary, who is the uh, Rangers ex-coach that they fired that Rob wasn't a fan of? I believe you were referring to Alain Villon. <laughs> Thank you. That's the only thing I miss about him not being the Ranger head coach anymore. Bon voyage, Alain So yeah, Rob, you uh, are one of the biggest, if not the biggest Ranger fan that I know. We'd love to hear your point of view too. So all you guys and gals, if, if you're more than invited to um, get your revenge and let us know what you think your favorite teams are going to be like this year and, and your overall picks as well. So we'd love to hear that, please. Yeah, and I just want to say, Lou, it, it, uh, it, this one's for Lou specifically, but I want you to know that I really wanted to pick the Penguins to miss the playoffs as well instead of Carolina, but I just, you know, common sense says there's no way. There's, well, there's always a way. There's, there's very little chance of that happening. So even I, with my unbridled malice and, uh, you know, blind hate, of your team even i cannot in good conscience predict them to miss the playoffs but i wanted to so i've picked them to miss the playoffs in spirit <laughs> well we'll remember that when the season's over come uh, april so let's move over to the atlantic as we stick in the east the four teams i picked to not make the playoffs senators sabers panthers and my surprise pick Again, the Red Wings, I think back-to-back -back years, they won't make the playoffs. Uh, again, that's not really based on much, but uh, the quite frankly, the Atlantic is, is really, they're stacked, as is the Metropolitan. So it, it's really, the, the way that they do the divisions now in the NHL over the last years, it's uh, really tight races, and it's with the point systems being that the way that they are, uh, especially the last couple of years, there have been some teams that have been really good and didn't make the playoffs with almost 100 points, which growing up was just if a team got to 90 points, you were a lock for the postseason. So the way things are now, it's just really odd. But um, so that's not saying that they stink or whatever the case is. I just don't think I mean, if the Senators obviously losing Carlson. You know, and the Sabres still kind of in a rebuilding form, but you never know. Uh, the Panthers, I think, they, they had a really good year last year. I believe that they just missed the playoffs, if uh, memory serves. But um, we'll see how that goes. And uh, the Wings, it's just, it's really tight. So I had to pick four teams out of, the, uh, out of the Atlantic, and then those are the four that I came up with. That's fair. Although it is worth noting, James, that the Red Wings are currently 6-0 and in the preseason. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. But, uh, Me know lots of things. No, <laughs> look, <laughs> we're both Mets fans. We know from long, long experience that what you do in the preseason is no indication of what's going to happen during your season. Yeah. You know, it has like it, it. It really has no bearing on what actually happens for the rest of the year. So, I just you know thought I'd throw that out there just to rib you a little bit. 
Thank you, sir. So my my picks are very similar to yours. I'm going to also go with the Senators, the Sabres, and the Panthers to miss the playoffs from that division. And uh, my, my other pick from the Atlantic, I tried it last year, and I was – Badly embarrassed, but I'm I'm coming back and saying that the Habs are going to miss again. And again, <laughs> I mean, I don't mean they're going to miss the playoffs again. I mean, I am again predicting them to miss the playoffs. Oh, yeah. You know what? Thank you. I made a mistake. You're right. The Canadians are in the Atlantic Division, and I yes. accidentally said that they were in the... So I'm getting off to a rousing start, so I'm not even getting the uh, divisions right. So thank you very much. That's okay. But uh, yeah, so... I I have no, as I said, I have no basis for any of this. Just uh, I really, I don't like Montreal and I really want them to miss the playoffs. So, uh, you know, they're, uh, that's what I'm, that's what I'm calling this year. Fair enough. At least you know what you're talking about. I don't. I have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm, you know, this is, this is not at all based in fact. This is just complete, uh, this is a complete waste of the listener's time, honestly. <laughs> yeah, but at least you know what the divisions are. Uh, so I just I have it open here on my phone. So yeah, I, I have it right in front of me as well. <laughs> okay, so there you go. Um, Pay thank no you attention very much. to the man behind the curtain. That's right. Uh, so that screws up my pick. So let's go over to the west now. Yay! <laughs> go west, young man. This, I'll go out there and stay there. Uh, in the central, let's see if I got this right. I think that the wild avalanche and Blackhawks won't make it. The Blackhawks being my surprise pick. And let's see. Yeah. The wild, uh, yep. Okay. So those teams are actually in the central. So I think that those three won't make it. And that's only because the jets predators and blues and, and stars are so good. And I just think that, uh, they'll be hundred plus you know, 95 plus point teams. And um, not that the Avalanche will lose, be out by much or the Blackhawks either, but uh, in the wild too, they, they, they've been such a good young team over the last few years. It's just that three teams can't make it, or at least three teams can't make it out of the, uh, the central. So I, I think that's what it comes down to. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say definitely think the Avalanche won't make it. Uh, I, 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 it's hard to count out the Blackhawks, you know, they're, they're an original six team and they've always had that. They always seem to have a lot of talent. I don't, I, 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 and, and Minnesota is such a, such a great hockey town. I don't think, you know what? I'm going to, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to say that it's the avalanche, the, the blues and the predators are going to miss the playoffs. It's Whoa. A, I know, I know it's a, it's a daring and, and bold choice, but, um, yeah, that's, that's my picks. Okay. There's, there's some controversy right there, man. That, that's going to be interesting. I, I like your, I admire your guts. That, that's, that's good for you. Go out on a limb. Why not? I mean, it's easy to be, you know, bold and courageous with my picks when there's absolutely no consequence for getting them wrong. There you go. Well thought. So finally, let's go all the way out to the Pacific, where I think that the Canucks, I think the Coyotes won't make it either. And I say that with a heavy heart because we just have sung the praises of the great stuff that the Coyotes have been doing, the organization have been doing for hockey and deck hockey specifically in Arizona. So that that, that doesn't make me happy. And a couple of ex-Rangers are on the Coyotes too, so I have a rooting interest in that. As well, but uh, again, the competition is just too stiff. The the Sharks, I think the Golden Knights have proven that they are for real, and I think that they'll be uh, right in the thick of things again next season. Um, so if I didn't say it before, I think the surprise pick would be the Kings not to make it. Uh, I don't think the Oilers have enough to get over the hump into the postseason. So my four teams on the outside looking in are the Canucks, Oilers, Kings, and Coyotes in the Pacific. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. I'm with you on the Canucks and and the Kings. I think they have fallen off over recent years. I think this will be the year they miss. Did they make it last year? Uh, the, Kings the Kings did. Yeah, did? they okay. had 98 points. All right. Yeah, I think I'm with you on the Canucks and the Kings and the Oilers. I don't think like 
I just Edmonton can't seem to win. Like they, you know, every year it's the same thing. They get all this draft talent, and they never do anything with it. And you know, I just, I don't know. Maybe this is the year they prove us all wrong. But no, I don't expect good things from Edmonton. I feel like it's karma. You know, they had such great years with Gretzky and Messier and all them, and. Uh, Mm. Uh, and and so now they're cursed to never be successful ever again. Yeah, and the worst thing too is uh, m- among having probably the greatest player, arguably, uh, as their their team captain now. But they got the taste of the postseason two years ago, and then took a big step backwards last year. And I don't know if they're going to have enough to right the ship. So that that makes sense. It, it's it's weird how sports play out that way Mm -hmm. where you have different players and different ownership but it's the same franchise and how things and i'm speaking of as an ex-jet fan here because i don't care about the nfl anymore but it's just odd how it it, a franchise just has certain things happen to it that uh really makes no sense and and i think you're probably right there that the edmonton oilers might have sold their soul maybe or had to pay a debt for having such amazing talent (laughs) in the 80s and uh, early '90s as well, so we'll see. Yeah. Okay. So, and then I, that's so that my first three picks are the same as yours, and then for my fourth pick, I'm gonna say that the Coyotes will make it in, and the Sharks will not. Wow. I'm gonna say the San sh- Jose is gonna miss. Oh. oh, oh my gosh. Okay. Look, I know they had a better year last year than they have had in in previous years. I know for a long time they were out in the first round. And last year they managed to, uh, you know, break through. But I feel like that was like, uh, you know, the again, this is based on nothing. But I feel like that was their like, this is our year to, you know, this is our chance. This is the year we finally break through and and our best shot. And now they're going to fall off. Okay, well, here's some controversy because I picked the Shen, uh, the Shen Jose. I picked the San Jose Sharks. As uh, I, I thought that they had the best offseason, they, they acquired Eric Carlson, the defensive stellar player from the Senators. And I think that will be the difference maker for them to go all the way, possibly. Right. Uh, but that, that, that again, man, I, I admire your guts. And, and it's great to predict something that is uh, really controversial. And if you're right, it, People will just lose their minds, and hey, you heard it here first on Hit the Deck, baby. Yeah. So good for you, you know, for to take a baseball term, swing for the fences, baby. Yeah. Well, as I said earlier, I preface this by saying I have, you know, I don't pay attention to the the trades really and the the signings. So if they had a great off season, good for them, and you know, prove me wrong. That's fine. Like I don't. Again, there's absolutely no consequences for me being wrong here. I have no problem with having egg on my face because I really have <laughs> nothing, you know, n- no vested interest in any of these besides the Rangers being right. There you go. And yeah, and we, we invite you to uh, the listener. Please let us know what your thoughts are. And uh, we, we'd love to uh, share them with everybody on I, our Facebook and Instagram and Twitter or whatever else. I will actually make a somewhat controversial prediction here you know kind of uh intentionally and that is well i think that vegas will make the playoffs again i don't think they'll have nearly as good a year as they did last year and i think they're going to go out in the first round yeah you know what that that makes sense again talking about the karma of sports they were just remarkable last year and and uh gary and i and i remember specifically that you said that they would not be a last place team yes i did say that that, and you were more than right as they made it all the way. Well, I also stadium. predicted them to miss the playoffs, so I was half right. But again, who could have possibly predicted that? Yes, we, we were impressed with the team that they put together and, and from top to bottom, GM and, and player alike and coach and just it all fell into place. Really remarkable. But to go all the way to the Stanley Cup final with the talent and, and, and the, the, the teams that they beat to get there too, just unbelievable. There's no way. I guess uh, the the odds must have been ridiculous being in Vegas themselves, but uh, amazing. But I'm you still, weren't wrong. <laughs> I, I'm still a little mad at them actually for uh, you know kind of proving Flurry out as a a competent yeah. goalie. Yeah. Wow. Boy. Um, speaking How of dare Vegas, you? I uh, I gotta be. I gotta agree with you on that one. Um, I, I 
tip my cap and tap my stick to Mr. Fleury there because, yeah, uh, when he was in a Penguins uniform, I thought that he was overrated and and it was the offense that really drove those teams. But you don't win Stanley Cups without having a good goalie at minimum. And he proved that he is an elite goalie. So that was really remarkable and, and good for him. But yes, exactly. As Ranger fans, that wasn't easy for us to to deal with. But it all, it, yeah, it, it all fell into place. So we'll see if uh, they'll be paying the piper, so to speak, this year. But uh, Rowdy we Roddy Piper? That, yeah, well, you know, he's. Uh, I think he's up in heaven. He pay so. the estate of the piper, I guess. Maybe. <laughs> but, uh, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's my mediocre Rowdy Roddy Piper. One of the all-time best bad guys in, in wrestling history. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so we'll see. And, and again, we want to hear what you think, and, and the NHL season's upon us soon, so let's jump on board and have fun and, and watch one of the best sports in the world. Absolutely. When, you know, If you want to open a dialogue with us on this or, or you know, with, with other listeners of the show, Go on our Facebook page. Uh, we are at Hit the Deck on Facebook, and let us know what you think. Let us know where you think we got it wrong, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll <laughs> everybody's opinion is valid here. So, you know, let us know. So uh, that being said, I I do want to move on, especially since we've been going for like forty five minutes already, and I don't know how that happened, but. Uh, real quick between segments, there was one thing that I, I wanted to mention, and I didn't bring it up at the top of the, the podcast, uh, and it's not enough for a full segment. But um, this past weekend when I was playing hockey, I, I've kind of touched on this before, but it really kind of crystallized for me. Uh, this past weekend when I was playing hockey, uh, I was playing, and as I implied by saying I was playing hockey, and so... As a goalie, I, you know, we, we've had a segment, we've done a segment before about kind of injuries and, you know, the, the whole weekend warrior aspect of it and how we, how we look at our injuries and scar, you know, battle scars and kind of badges of honor. But as a goalie, and I, I think I've, I've mentioned this before on the podcast, you know, if someone like hits me in the mask or, or if something happens to me and I, I get hurt, like, uh, they say, you know, are you okay? And my response is, is it in the net? <laughs> and then, you know, no, then I'm fine. But so this weekend I, we were playing and I made like, um, I don't know. I was down, I guess I made a save and, and it got kicked out for a rebound and I was caught out and I kind of, I kind of dove, not even dove in the traditional sense, but I like, just pushed myself out sideways across the net and came down hard on my hip. And I put my hands up and like, I I was able to make, I was able to stop the shot from, you know, the open side of the net. And I I was, you know, I felt it. I mentioned I came down for hard, but like, it didn't matter because I made the save, you know, my, my entire, my entire view on that injury, and, and, you know, it's not like I was badly injured. I was a little sore for a few days and stiff, but it, my, my entire viewpoint on that was colored by the fact that I made the save. Like, I laid out a few weeks ago for something, and I scratched up my, uh, my elbow and my arm, I think. And I didn't make the save in that case. I didn't even make the save. So I, I, you know, in a lot of ways, I felt like that injury was, was a waste, you know, like it was pointless, but this, you know, I I was thinking, Oh, you know, even if I get hurt, I made the save. So it's okay. Like, and, and I wonder if there's something, well, I'm not going to say, <laughs> is there something wrong with me? Cause I think that's, that's a question that's pretty self-evident, but you know, <laughs> is that like, is is that some kind of thinking that I should be concerned about that I care more about making the save than I do about my own physical well-being or it, you know do you think that's more typical for for an athlete and a, especially a hockey player Absolutely that that really puts in perspective beautifully what it means for an athlete to compete because to get to an elite level I have no idea what it takes to get to be an NHL or an MLB or whatever. Nor I. Yeah, but to put it in perspective, absolutely. The 
fact that the sacrifice you made on your body resulted in making a save and helping your team to a victory or at least stopping the puck from going in, a, you know, in other words, doing your job, so to speak. Mm-hmm. No question about it that uh, an injury, you, you brush it off. Plus, it's the adrenaline and excitement of doing something well. You can, even if you don't uh, blurt it out and you're humble about it, you can be proud of yourself in your mind at least and, and see that the determination and the sacrifice paid off. So absolutely, that, that, that's what it is to be an athlete. That's what it is to compete. And for people that look at sports and think it's a waste of time or it's silly, it really is not. It, 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 there's so many positives to sports. And, you know, we've already gotten a little bit long in this podcast and we'd go a lot longer for days saying how great sports are. But that's a perfect example of a reward and why you play and, and why it's fun. So well said, sir. But it's not even like we as as we've mentioned before on the podcast, you know, we play in a pickup league and it's there's there's literally no stakes. It's you know, it's like my predictions. There's nothing on the line except pride and, you know, per- personal pride and, and uh, you know, your own kind of the testing your own limits and, and, and what you expect of yourself. So to to treat it like, Oh, if I, if I made the save or if I won, then, you know, the, the, the fleeting win that, you know, actually means nothing to say that that outweighs like a potentially, uh, well, potentially permanent, but you know, just like a, a, a potentially long-term injury is, is kind of strange to, to think of it that way. But for me, you know, it, it's like, it, I don't think it's weird at all. Like it's just, obvious to me and i just i have to wonder about that well i mean and again like like you said that the the sacrifice you made and the injury you got when you didn't make the save i i do think that that hurts more, worse because it, then you're just left with the pain and then it's a reminder of darn it i didn't make the save and i have many uh, battle scar from my softball days and and hockey and deck hockey days as well to share with you uh, uh, to agree on those aspects, but exactly. I mean, no one's watching. No one's, we're not making money or anything like that. It's, we're just playing for the love of the sport and uh, the beauty of it. And and that's what it's all about. So the, uh, an injury is worth dealing with if you did well. And it's, it's exactly, it's kind of like a battle scar. And, you know, I got that because I did well, I did something good and uh, it was worth it. So, I I mean, if we sound crazy, then so be it, but uh, I'm on your your side for that. All right. Oh, well, thank you. I'm, I'm just, sorry for that little, uh, you know, kind of detour, but I just, I wanted to bring it up because it just seems significant to me in a way in, in, in a moment of, you know, kind of, uh, self analysis, you know, a moment of clarity there. I guarantee you the listener, if, if, if you play deck and probably why you're listening to this podcast is that you do play and love deck hockey. I think the listener would agree 100% as well. And for our other topic of the evening, I always say the evening because we record in the evening, but the listener could be listening to this at any time of day or night. Like, I, I you know, I don't know. I shouldn't make that kind of like I, from a from a meta standpoint, I'm taking the listener potentially out of the podcast. And, and uh, you know, I should I want to engage you, listener, not make you you know, take you out of the podcast. So shame on me, but, uh, I don't see myself breaking that habit anytime soon. So hopefully we can both just deal with it anyway. Yeah. So as you were saying, James, the, the, our, our, our other topic of conversation for this podcast is, uh, you know, I, I almost feel bad talking about this, because it really is low hanging fruit. Like at this point, we're just piling on. But how can we not? You know, given the nature of the podcast that we do, and 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 the nature of this topic, how can we not talk about it? There's really no way for us to avoid it. So, James, as as you saw, and and listener, you very likely saw. And if you somehow managed to escape it, you know, good for you. But but no one escapes gritty not for very long he will find you wherever you are he will find you and he will have you he will invade your dreams and your nightmares 
<laughs> there is no place safe from Gritty. <laughs> So Gritty is the new Flyers mascot. <laughs> and um, if you haven't seen him, like, Google him. Definitely Google him. <laughs> or actually, you know what? Maybe don't. Because as I said to my wife earlier this evening, once you see it, you cannot unsee it. <laughs> so, like, you know, maybe tread carefully. Okay. But so... If 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 you've managed to to elude Gritty thus far, I'm going to describe him for you. Gritty is the new Flyers mascot, and so I guess he's wearing a Flyers uniform. That's that's important. Um, <laughs> to describe the let's say creature himself. Okay, for for those of you who are old enough or at least who are familiar with the reference, I, I think I can, I can describe him thusly. So imagine that when HR Puffin stuff went <laughs> off the air, low many, many years ago, instead of just going away to, you know, whatever fairy realm or dimension that such things go off to, or uh, for, for more practical purposes, just having a costume thrown in a closet and never thought about again, so imagine that when H.R. Puffin stuff went off the air, that he was dragged off to an insane asylum <laughs> and locked in a room with Cheeto dust covering every surface, which over the years turned him orange and insane. Behold, Gritty. <laughs> He's he's this orange creature. Uh he's 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 quite portly. He's got quite the belly. He's got like this really just wild he's got this wild mop of, of scraggly hair under his helmet and his eyes. His eyes are haunting. They're they're I mean, from practically speaking, they're googly eyes. But mm. like they just bounce around like a psychotic cookie monster and it's it's like it's it, he really does look insane he he looks he looks like an insane like and i think this is a, I, personally i think this is appropriate for for philadelphia because you know philadelphia but like who approved this seriously who who who, who looked down and you know what committee looked at the sketches for this thing and said, yep, yep, that's the Flyers. That that encapsulates our organization in a nutshell. Let's do this thing. <laughs> Who makes that decision? Uh, James, I, I heard this and I'm going to, or I read this actually, and I'm going to relay it to you because I don't know if you're aware of the kind of, uh, you know, in-universe etymology of Gritty, you know, where he came from. So... My understanding is that the Flyers explained it that, uh, and and I am not making this up. Apparently, his he is he is the child of a bully, or he is descended from bullies, and I, I assume that's the Broad Street bullies. One assumes, but so supposedly they were doing some construction at the Wells Fargo Center, and they dug too deep and disturbed <laughs> something. That was living there. It, basically, they've made an orange Godzilla. Like, <laughs> this is Gritty. This is Gritty's backstory. So now that he has been awoken from his nightmare slumber, he, he, he now comes out and he roams the Wells Fargo Center uh, like a crazy person. <laughs> to, to answer your question before with the, the focus groups or who okayed this and who grunt this up uh i do think that uh, it must have been a joke from rangers and devils and penguins fans i think they all kind of got together and say how could we possibly humiliate the flyers worse than they are already and and that's where gritty came from <laughs> if you look into his eyes <laughs> he will invade your nightmares uh. he like he's i don't know he 
his first appearance, I think this was his first appearance, like actually at a game, <laughs> he ran out on the ice and he promptly <laughs> fell down. It's 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 very funny. <laughs> he just he just whoop and fell fell right on his 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 gritty posterior. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I mean, fine, but he was like, I was watching the Rangers game. The Rangers were playing the Flyers this evening in a preseason match. I had it on and they, I, I missed the beginning of the game. So if they focused on Gritty's hijinks, then uh, I missed it. But at the end of the game, they did a quick like montage recap as, as, they often do at the end of these games. And there were several sequences of gritty, like just kind of running around or skating around maybe and getting in, in like people's faces on the ice. And he like did a belly flop and he was just kind of running and jumping. And, and I mean, yeah, I know mascots often kind of be silly and bother people in a funny way, especially mascots from Philadelphia. I'm looking at you honker. But so this guy, like, I, maybe it's the eyes. I can't like I can't stop focusing on his eyes. They really are nightmare fuel. But he just he seems like there's something wrong with him. I mean, <laughs> I'm I'm I guess I'm anthropomorphizing this mascot to a degree and, you know, <laughs> assigning him some kind of mental disorder that I would assume isn't actually there. But there really does legitimately seem to be something wrong with him. And I think that's what they're going for. Like their mascot is somebody who is mentally disturbed. I just don't get it. Oh. I, I got nothing to add. It's just... James, give me an over under how long he lasts. The, over under two seasons under. Under? Okay. All right. I guess I'm taking the over then. Oh, man. I don't know if he's going to make it to the All-Star game <laughs> this year. Oh, this, just thank you for whoever dreamt this idiot up. Just thank you very much. Oh, boy. I mean, in all honesty, with the way they've they've laid this guy out, this thing out – in terms of his backstory, <laughs> it would not surprise me if part of his backstory is he enjoys feasting on cheesesteaks made of human flesh. Like Ew. it wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, I, it's, obviously that's disgusting and no sensible organization would get anywhere close to that. But like gritty, <laughs> I, I can't, I, there's, there's no other like there's no plausible explanation for why this creature should exist in the first place gritty no. that's that's the only explanation i can offer gritty oh thank you so much american rhino yeah <laughs> you're welcome you're speaking for every hockey fan in the world including flyer fans i think <laughs> <sighs> yeah i don't know i mean like it's not <laughs> april right this isn't like some some extended April Fool's prank. I don't know. I mean, we're close to Halloween. We are but... getting close on Halloween. Yes. So I I just I don't think they'd invest all that money for for you know just a a one month character. <laughs> yeah, but we're not gonna let this go. We're gonna keep this for as long as we can. I mean, that's what hockey fans do. And we get a hold of something, we never let the other team live it down. <laughs> Although I am looking forward to the first wave, and I say the first wave because I'm sure there will be a bunch of these, and then there will be a bunch more copycats. I'm sure the copycats won't be very good, but I'm I'm looking forward to the first wave of <laughs> gritty inspired horror movies, and you know, like that are going to crop up on YouTube and what have you. Oh boy! Yeah. Oh, and if the Flyers have a bad season, forget about it. Oh boy! <laughs> Thank you. I mean, they threw f they threw snowballs at Santa Claus. What are yes. they going to do to this escaped convict? <laughs> Either welcome him with open arms, or just pretend they don't know him. I don't know. He's one of us. <laughs> Bury him again, or put him back in his slumber, or whatever they claim they found him. <laughs> 
like if Gritty's head turned around 360 degrees, all of the exorcists, that would not surprise me at all. <laughs> Thank you. All right, let's get out of here. Last minute remaining in the podcast. Thanks, Pops. We ran a little long on this one, but uh, I don't know. I guess it's worth it. Anyway, you're, you, you, only you, listener, only you can make that determination for yourself. So I hope you find this podcast as worthwhile as I seemingly did. I don't know where this last hour and change went. I honest to God don't. Like, I, I have no idea uh, how, how we managed to talk for that long about what we talked about. But, you know, here we are. I guess uh, ours is not to reason why. Ours is just to ramble like idiots. Anyway, that being said... Thank you, Pops, for being the voice of the podcast. Thank you to Anthony Sejazi for providing music to the podcast. Thank you to the LIQ for sound effects. Thank you to you always for listening to the podcast. If there were no you, there would be no us, and that's just not okay. So we really do genuinely appreciate you for listening. Once again, if you would like to get in touch with us, if you'd like to once again share your opinion on where the teams that you root for or really just any of the teams in the NHL are going to fall this season, please feel free to email us at hit the deck. Deck is D E K. Hit the deck at gmail.com or tweet at us at hit the deck pod. We are at hit the deck on Instagram and Facebook. And uh, on YouTube, we are Hit the Deck Podcast. That is our channel. So please feel free to comment on there or any of those places. And we definitely want to hear from you. Also, subscribe if you haven't already done so. Please, we'd love it if you would subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts or Podbean or Stitcher or the uh, the Google Podcasts or uh, any 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 number of podcasting outlets. You know, subscribe. Make sure you get us each and every week in your ear holes. And, uh, you know, with all that being said, uh, James, is there anything else you have to say about it? <laughs> anything else you'd care to add here at the end of the podcast? I'm done. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right. That's fine. So, um, you know, thank you once again for listening. And uh, if you ever have a problem listening to the podcast, by the way, if uh, you, you can't get us on, on Podbean or something like that, if you know, we, we sent out a tweet or something and you know the podcast is there, but you can't actually get, get to it. Let us know, please, because we don't get any kind of notification when that happens. And we want you to be able to get your hit the deck. So, yeah, just drop us a line, please, if you would. Let us know, hey, there's a problem. So we can get in touch with Podbean and, and get them to fix it. So um, we appreciate that. And so, you know, with that being said, I guess there's really nothing left to do but to finish this out in the usual way which is to say that whether you are making uh, great educated picks for for the nhl season or whether you are just pulling random teams out of your backside whether you are nostalgic for your childhood or whether you are a drooling maniac who's you know the the stuff of nightmares Regardless of whatever you happen to find yourself doing, we would always and forever encourage you to remember it's deck hockey. Don't be that guy. Thanks, everybody. I guess you didn't want to look like he was a homer. No, I wanted him to be a homer. <laughs> if you can't even count on family to give you a good rating. Yeah, I well, mean, come on. Where's the nepotism? I don't know.